Who was your favorite player growing up? Derek Jeter. All right. How many baseball gloves do you own? Four. What's the <laughs> best piece of advice you ever received? Never be satisfied. And if you weren't a baseball player, what would you be? Um, ooh. um, I don't know. This is always plan A. Plan B always was to go to school and be, uh, I wanted to be athletic director for one of my our high school or college. Yeah. Who's a pitcher you really want to face someday? Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Turgar. What's your favorite activity on a road trip? Just hanging out, hanging out, playing video games. And what's one place you've always wanted to visit? Uh, Puerto Rico. I have a right. family on that side, so I always got want to go see them. I feel like you're one of a, a group of players that have had an experience over the last years that's kind of unprecedented in baseball history. Uh, with the yeah. shutdown, going to play indie ball for a year. I want to talk about that experience uh, of going to play yeah. indie. How, how did you find out that was even a possibility? Um, we heard it was in the works probably, i say a month before they actually got the okay to go do it. Um, just through, through social media and through my agency and through other players who were trying to go play somewhere who didn't know if it was possible or not. And then uh, we finally got the okay to go do it. And then next, you know, a few days later, I got the call and say, hey, uh, we, there's a team over in Joliet, very close, close to home, that where you can go play. And, and that's the perfect situation for me for the summer. So that's why I decided to lace them up for a few days. Yeah, were you able to live at home while you were doing that? I was actually, yeah. I've, my dad had recently moved out from the area that my high school was in, closer to the town of Joliet. So yeah, I was basically down the street. <laughs> Now, all the way through the the affiliated player development system, you're with players who are kind of similar experience levels, similar spots in their careers. Then you go to Joliet, where you've got teammates, one teammate that's younger than you and some that are a full decade older. What was that experience like? You got to see different perspectives. There's a lot of guys who were, say, released from their team because of the pandemic or trying to get back into baseball or never had been into pro baseball. This was their first opportunity was the Indie Ball League. Just getting different perspectives on life itself and what other people are doing outside of the Brewers and outside of what I've come to know over the past couple of years. And then just seeing how they react and how appreciative I am of this opportunity that I have that I am signed with a major league club and I do have this opportunity to go and further my career. It has to be kind of a, a difficult balance with the Brewers wanting you to go play, but obviously wanting you to play, you know, specific positions, develop in a certain way. What did the Brewers tell you about what to do while you were there? Just the most important thing was not getting hurt. Obviously, this is not my season. It's just, it was a season for me to get back into the group of playing again. So we played about 30 games. I played probably I played most, if not all of them. But it was dissected into innings where I, I don't have to play all nine if I didn't want to or need to. But I played different positions. I got the at-bats that I needed. I saw the pitching that I needed. It was good competition all around. And it was just getting back into baseball rather than sitting at home and doing nothing. So it sounds like it's something that if you could do all over, you'd do again? Yeah, definitely. 100%. I'd recommend it for anybody who's in pro ball or pandemic year or whatever. <laughs> it, was a, it was a great experience for sure. Now, through all that time, uh, we've seen you grow as a, a player. Uh, we've yeah. seen you grow as a person. You, you've added a lot of muscle over that time. I know we talked about that last week. What's the process like of, you know, kind of adding muscle, but trying not to sacrifice your speed, which has been such a big part of your game? Just getting in the gym, knowing the proper lifts and the proper dieting, making sure I am still that athletic guy I can be that I was before while still maintaining the strength we're still building and just basically getting to the best shape that I can possibly be as right now as a 22 year old self. 
and just going into this year that's really all that I focused on. So what are your goals for this year? And I'm trying to make it as far as I can, as far as high as I can right now. But uh yeah, just keep putting the other good at bats. Been doing it so far. Uh, we have a great team. Just keep moving the line. Like I said, one through nine, we're we're gonna do whatever we can to score runs. So just be a part of this team. Just do whatever I can to help this team win. Now you're on your first road trip in what is now the High A Central League, but these cities are yeah. gonna look pretty familiar because you saw them all as a Midwest League in 2019. Yeah. Do you yeah. feel like that gives you an advantage, kind of having experienced all this before? I'd say yeah, because like you said, we most of these clubs that we're playing are relatively close to my home. So I grew up around the area. I played in some of the stadiums already. I played in the stadiums, like you said, last year in the low way Midwest League. And then everything, there's nothing, there are no surprises. So that's one thing I have to look forward to every place we go. I know where we're going to stay. I know how the field plays. I know how the wind's acclimated. I know the weather because I've been here my entire life. So it's nothing really surprising at all. In past years, when we've talked to Maddie, he's talked about having players who come back and kind of asking them to take on a leadership role uh, because they know what to expect and they know some of the things you're talking about. Obviously, you've got more guys this year that are back on the team than usual, but do you feel like that's a, a responsibility for you to make sure some of the new guys kind of acclimate to this environment? As a responsibility, no. Guys are guys take it upon themselves to be their best version. Guys take it upon themselves to hold yourself, be hold each other accountable for whatever the reason is, whether we've been here for four years or whether this is a guy's first time in Pro Bowl or this is a guy's first game. Yeah, we ask questions. Yeah, guys are more familiar with other things. But other than that, we hold each other accountable. and Everybody's been doing a great job with that so far. Do you have a little more room to stretch out on the bus this week than the last time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got, the, we got the two buses, which is nice. I'm referring to going back to one for the rest of the week, but... Hey, it's whatever. Do you guys get a, a good movie on the bus this time? We're, it was silence on the bus coming here. We got up at uh, we had seven o'clock intake. We had a eight o'clock bus, and it was early, so the guys were asleep most of the way. And then the other guys were talking over there, whatever. But no, nah, no movie on the bus. Not this time. Tried to get one in, but no one wanted to play it. <laughs> All right, I think that's all I needed. Thank you very much for taking the time today. Hey, of course.